In this video, I'll show you how you can use the inbuilt table of contents feature. I got a message from Valerie asking about the Captivate table of contents feature. She wants to know if submenus are available. She has modules within her projects and wants to separate them out into individual modules. Well, the good news, Valerie, is that the table of contents feature in Adobe Captivate can totally be used for that purpose. And uh, we'll show you that today, along with giving everyone else a tour of the table of contents feature. So let's take a look at that. You can access the table of contents feature from the project drop down menu and simply select table of contents. Alternatively, you can press Shift F10 to bring you into the table of contents window that you see here. Uh, to turn the table of contents option on, simply check off Show Table of Contents. Now this will show you all of the slides within your course in their current form. And if you, for whatever reason, uh, you need to reset this because sometimes this will go out of sync with what's actually in your course, there is a reset table of content button down here at the bottom in the toolbar. Now, if I want to create those folder structures, uh, structures that Valerie's referring to, I'm just going to click on slide one and you'll notice that the folder icon becomes available. If I click on that, it creates a topic name with a check mark next to visible. I'm going to rename this and I'll just simply call it module one. Now I can select the slides that are going to be a part of module one. I'm just going to hold down my shift key and select the first and the last slide within that group. And now I can use the right arrow to move those table of content entries to within that module. So now you can see I have a little arrow that allows me to show or hide the slides that are included within module one. Let's click on slide number four and I'm going to click on the folder icon, create a second module and we'll call that module two. Again, like before, I'll select the remaining slides and we'll put those into that particular folder. So now we have a folder structure and of course you can choose to show or hide any of the slides that are within your project uh, as you see fit. Now I don't know about you, but this uh, flesh colored toolbars or, or table of contents uh, window is not really appealing. So the good news is, is that you can customize this and I'll take you through how to do that now. So down here at the bottom, there is a settings button. This will allow you to edit the table of content colors and settings and font settings and so forth. So we'll take a look at that right now. I'm just going to reposition the table of content settings. It usually just shows up in the middle of your screen, but it's nice to be able to see a preview of your project in the preview window here to get an idea of what that table of contents screen will look like. The first option is for a style of table of contents, and there's two types. There's a separate table of contents that resides on its own and really doesn't move or change in any way, but you can also change it to become an overlay table of contents. In other words, a table of contents that sits above your e-learning project and can be expanded and collapsed as needed. This is probably the preferred way and incidentally if you are designing a responsive design project the separate table of contents option is not available and nor is the ability to place its position on the left or right you can only choose left if you have a, a separate table of contents you can choose and the default is to have it stretch the full height of your browser window but if you uncheck that, there's space left next to where the toolbar or the play bar at the bottom of your screen would be. 
I'm going to choose overlay and I'm going to choose left for this particular table of contents. Next we have the alpha option and if there's a reason that you want your table of contents to be somewhat transparent you can make a setting other than 100%. I'm going to prefer to keep this at 100 but you can take this all the way down to almost and entirely transparent if that's what you prefer. Let's stick with 100. The remaining options here uh, before we get into the theme, colors, and font settings are the runtime options. And simply put, uh, each of these does one or two things. The collapse all option uh, during runtime when a user launches your table of contents, the default is to have this unchecked, in which case they'll see all of the individual slides. If they check this off, they'll only see your module names, your folder names. And this will still allow them to open these up and view the slides, but the default view will be this one here. I'm going to keep it unchecked for now. Self-paced learning refers to a combination of features in this case. Uh, over here on the right hand side there are status flags and these are simply check marks that will appear next to the slides as you viewed them and completed those slides. If you exit the course and you've set up bookmarking to be turned on, in other words, your learning management system will remember where your users have left off in the course, having self-paced learning checked off will also have them remember the status flags next to any slides that have already been completed. If you don't use bookmarking, you can actually uncheck self-paced learning. But if you do use bookmarking, I'd recommend that you keep it checked off. Next to each slide will be the topic duration, and you can simply choose to show that or not, whatever it is that you prefer. Also, uh, you can choose to have the slide items be clickable within your table of contents. So if I would like to jump ahead to slide number six, I can do so. You may wish to further restrict users from navigating to slides or sections of your course that haven't been visited yet. So you can click uh, navigate visited slides only. So if I've completed module one, but I haven't visited module two, I'll be able to click and review the different slides that I've already been to, but I won't be able to get too far ahead. The next uh, section here on the right hand side is the ability to show a search option. When users click this little magnifying glass, they'll be able to type in a keyword or phrase and search for that within your course. You can restrict users from searching within the quiz, uh, or you can allow it by checking this option off here. In fact, you can entirely remove the ability to search by unchecking show search, and obviously search quiz gets grayed out as well. Like we mentioned before, you have the status flags next to each slide item. So once you've completed an item, that little check mark will appear next to the slide, letting you know that you've already viewed that slide. If you don't like that, you can of course turn that feature off. And there's also the option to provide your users a clear button down here at the bottom, which will clear off their progress if they so choose it. At the very bottom of the table of contents will be a movie duration and this will show their current position within the course plus the entire length of the movie just to give them an idea of where they are within the progress of the course. There's a default expand and collapse icon built into Adobe Captivate but you can replace that with an icon of your own choosing by selecting it from this little folder icon here and here. The default icon is 16 pixels by 16 pixels. You cannot have a customized icon that is wider than 16 pixels, but you can have an icon that's taller than 16 pixels. Also, you can set the width of your table of contents. 
the default is 250, but you can drag this over and make it right up to 500 pixels wide. Now, I don't know about you, but currently this Caucasian flesh colored table of contents um, is not all that appealing. So let's customize it a little bit here. I'm going to choose some new colors here. I'm going to go with a darker color and change the background to like a dark gray. Uh, we'll change the heading area to uh, that same dark gray. Um, you know, you can uh, change the outline to black if you wish. The active entry could be um, not quite as dark as the other items, let's say. The default entry, uh, we'll go with the same for that. And you could have uh, a rollover effect, maybe just a slightly lighter gray color. And the title area, let's go with that, that original dark gray there. Colors of the fonts are no longer appropriate, so you can customize those as well. And you can make font choices not just across the whole board with one shot, but break them down according to what level that you're looking at. So my folders could be one color. Let's choose white for those. And for my level two text, we'll choose a different color, maybe sort of a grayish uh, color. And um, level three, we could just do white again. And level four and five. Um, oh, I'm choosing the wrong thing here. There we go. So we have some customized table of co uh, content uh, fonts and colors. Uh, again, you can choose the any font you wish, but I would recommend a web safe font is probably your best bet. So I'm going to click on OK and this will save all the changes and settings I've, I've done. There's another area you can customize and I do recommend it. You'll notice that our table of contents title is still black. You can adjust that from the info button here. And in fact, I'm just going to move this over. In fact, I can put a lot of information in this upper area here if I so choose it. So I could put in the title of the course. I could put um, the name, but this could be anything you want. It could be perhaps the curriculum that this course contributes to. Uh, designation could be, um, you know, a department within your organization. You could put um, an email address if you wish. Uh, you could put the company website. You could put a description of the course. can also add a photo of the course if you are of the person who designed the course maybe or perhaps it's the instructor and of course we can um, change some of the font settings here uh, so I'm okay with the fonts themselves but the color obviously should be more of a contrast with that background so I'll just make that change relatively quickly And incidentally, the uh, description of the course, uh, you don't see it in the preview here, that's brought up in a separate window when you click the information icon. So that's pretty much it there. We could certainly uh, preview this now and see how it looks. So there's my expand icon. You can uh, you can use that, or you can use 
the TOC button that's located in your playback bar. I'll just use the expand button here. So there's my table of contents. Again, you can see the course title, the curriculum. Incidentally, that email and web address are clickable items. So those could, you could click those and be brought to the company website. The information icon will reveal the course description, which might just be the learning objectives for this particular course. And of course, you have all of your structure with, of course, those folders. And uh, this obviously shows you the check boxes indicating that you've completed that particular training. And we could clear that off if we wanted to. So all the functionality is there. Certainly we have our rollover effects. And you, as you can see, you can really customize the table of contents to be what you truly want it to be. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful or useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.